In this tutorial I'm going to be discussing how to control the exposure on a smartphone. Um, people often don't realise that there is some kind of pretty reasonable exposure control on most smartphones. Um, you can make it darker, you can make it lighter, but often it's hidden away or put in kind of unusual places. Um, I do a lot of photo workshops and often 50% of the people I talk to don't know this. So it's a really quick, really easy um, three minute demo that tells you how to control the exposure um, by telling the camera to not just pick an auto exposure and go with that by telling it to go lighter or darker. Suddenly you can pull out some really lovely details in the landscape, like the sky here, I would have told the exposure to go much darker than the camera would have wanted. So it gives me this lovely kind of richness. Um, it can help in interior. Um, photography as well, you can kind of make it brighter or darker to pick out just the kind of detail you want. It can really help with colours as well by forcing the image to be darker than it would want to be on um, on auto settings. Suddenly all oh, some really rich colours pop out like this strong sky and the moorland and this. Um, it can just help as well on, on kind of a bright day. Sometimes you might want that day to look really kind of um, kind of light and airy so by telling it to go a little bit lighter than it might want you get these lovely details. Um, it's also very useful when you're doing photography in snow where you've got a lot of white around you can say to the camera let it be a bit brighter. Sometimes when the whole image is full of white and you take a picture and it's on auto settings it wants to make it very grey but if you have control of it um, you can make it lighter and you can kind of make the snow look cleaner. Um, here's another snow one as well where I've done that um, and it's just good for picking out the kind of atmosphere you want for kind of trying to capture the dampness or the weather, just the feeling of an image. I think when you've got control of your exposure, even if it's not that much control, you can suddenly choose for things to be lighter, darker, and suddenly have images that have a really interesting sort of feeling and atmosphere to them. Um, this is one, for example, of at the sea where I told it, where I made the camera go really dark, so it's very atmospheric. You've just got that last glint of sunlight. Um, and you can use it to create quite abstract images as well. So again, another one where I've made it heavier than it might have been otherwise. Um, and another one of an island where it's got quite a nice atmosphere by letting it go a little bit darker. Um, it's also really good for capturing unusual details of the world, world as well. So you can get the exposure, play with it when you see these strange little effects of light or effects and reflections. Um, you can play with it and try a few different options, try lighter and darker. And suddenly there'll be one where it all clicks into place and you've got a really nice atmosphere. Um, this one with the leaves on the tree, suddenly you go just the right point. Um, it's really sort of glows and really kind of and jumps off that nice blue sky behind. Controlling the exposure is also very useful when you're inside buildings. So this is shooting out of a window. Sometimes um, when you've got shooting from inside out, the camera wants to deliberately make everything really, really bright. Whereas maybe you want that sense of kind of claustrophobic feeling where everything surrounds you. It's got that kind of darkness. So you can deliberately make the camera, the image much darker. So you feel like the light's kind of flooding in and you're in a darker space. Um, and then it's also quite useful in night photography. Um, every new model of smartphone that comes out seems to be better at capturing low light photography. Um, but having a little bit of control over the exposure for these kind of images is also really useful. Just trying it, it might look better if you deliberately make it darker. It might look better if you push it up and make it much brighter. So it's all about playing and being creative um, and just making the most of the camera you've got. Um, and often I'll take maybe seven or eight exposures of the same view and you'll find there's one where it just really kind of jumps out and looks really beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna do a three minute tutorial now which tells you how to um, control the exposure on an iPhone. It works very similar on other camera phones as well. Um, you might have to do, do a little bit of Googling to find the exact place and the exact way they work. Um, but have a play with it if you've got some time because it's uh, controlling the exposure is the point where you start controlling the atmosphere of your photographs. Um, and that's when you start getting images that have a kind of painterly feeling. Um, and I hope this is really useful. If you have any questions, if anything that I, you want more detail on that I've talked about here, please get in touch. I just wanted to do a really quick demo um, showing how you can control the exposure on smartphone photography. Um, so I apologise for my very scruffy garden, but I just want to do this very quick demo outside because this has come up quite a lot. Every time I do a workshop, there's usually four or five people that don't know you have a fair amount of control over the exposure on a smartphone. So this is how I do it on a iPhone, but also the same sorts of techniques work on um, different types of smartphones. So 
there's a fairly obvious thing where you touch the screen and you grab the exposure from that area. So in this case, it's grabbing the exposure from the sky. If I go down to this shadow down there, it's getting the exposure from there. Um, so you can kind of grab the exposure and focus from where you want. But also, the thing that a lot of people don't know about is you can grab your exposure, so you press the screen, and then once you've grabbed it, you can drag down and tell it to go really dark, and you can go a really long way with that. And you can do the opposite. Once you've grabbed it, you can drag up and make it a lot brighter. Um, and it just gives you lovely control. It allows you to bring detail in. So here I can bring that detail in the sky if I want. Um, and basically you're kind of overriding the camera. When the camera's on auto, it wants everything to be a kind of average color. It looks at the whole image and kind of creates an average color from that, or an average brightness, sorry. Um, so by having a little bit of exposure control, you can override that. You can tell it to be darker. So say you're shooting into the sun, and everything in the foreground is very silhouetted. You can drag that up and bring a bit of detail into that shadow area. Or if you're in a tunnel um, or inside a room and um, it's making everything too bright, but you want a kind of darker atmosphere, you can drag the exposure down and make it more shadowy. So it's not the most amazing amount of control over it, but it allows you to kind of override the camera. And that's the point where you can start being creative with your photography. You can start bringing in nice sort of atmosphere to the images. Um, so I hope that's useful. You may already know this, um, but a lot of people don't. Um, so I just thought it, it's a useful thing to share because it really unlocks um, iPhone photography and smartphone photography and allows you to be creative and create images that have a kind of rich atmosphere to them. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.